do appreciate Dr. Shells asking me to come here tonight and speak. It is an honor for me to come here and speak tonight uh, because what I've been doing over the past couple of months is something that I felt very personally about. It was something very important to me personally. But I can see that a lot of people feel as I do, and this, and this issue has brought that out. Now, just to give you a little bit of the background with respect to this, when I became national president of Unico, you're supposed to have a theme for yourself when you're national president. And you know, Unico does great things in service around the country. We have 134 chapters in 18 states, and our dedication is to doing service in the community. So we do scholarships, charities, community service, we do a lot of great things. But our organization was actually founded on discrimination. Because when Dr. Vistolo in 1922, a surgeon in Waterbury, Connecticut, wanted to join another service organization, he was denied because they said to his face, you're Italian, but they didn't use the word Italian. They used something else. So instead of protesting and being upset, he said, no, I'm going to do something good in the community, and I'm going to start an organization that does good works and is dedicated that, to that to show the community that Italian Americans are an important part of the community. And here we are 88 years later, and Unico continues to do that. So in my year as national president, instead of having the theme of trying to do more with respect to community service. I wanted to bring us back to 88 years ago and recommit ourselves to our Italian heritage. Thank you. you, you would go, as far as uh, we have 134 chapters in 18 states, we have over 8,000 members. And that's my wife there, Jenny. She's my first lady. Um, but in Unico, you're a national president for one year. So it's very important to pick out this theme. So we started doing some positive things. For example, we started an Italian art uh, exhibit where we had Italian-American artists. I started that. We put together an Italian-American and Italian heritage calendar with 365 days every single day having an Italian or Italian-American listed for the year 2010. In fact, that was a multi-year project. We actually are going to do multiple years and not have to repeat anybody in that calendar. That's how, many, how much contributions Italians and Italian Americans have done to this world. But I would be kidding myself, and you would be kidding yourselves, if you sit there and enjoy and celebrate everything that is to be Italian and Italian heritage, and ignore the increasing and ex accelerating attack on our heritage. We are the last ethnicity that it is okay to bash. There's no question about it. And, you know, Unico has had a great history in this. We've worked on anti-defamation over the years. But when it came to the time early on where we saw this casting call for a new program that MTV was putting together, it was brought to me early in my year as national president. And right in the casting call it said they were looking for the loudest, craziest, wildest Italian-American guidos for a new reality show. So we thought it was going to be a problem. Now personally I can tell you, you know, guido for me has always been a term of hate speech, but for me, for me more personally, because when I was 14 years old I ended up in the hospital for two days because of the word guido, wap and guinea. Because me, my younger brother and sister, we ended up in a physical altercation and defending my brother and sister, I ended up losing several teeth and having my skull cracked open because of those words. So Guido is an important thing. Now I'm telling you that for a reason. And you're going to hear why later when I tell you about my conversation with MTV. So when we saw this coming out, we thought it was going to be bad. But then in the beginning of November, they released the first 30 second promo for the show. And when you saw those 30 seconds of clips, and those bimbos and buffoons that were going to be on this show, and how they were extolling the fact that this is what it is to be Italian. Our worst fears were there. It, we knew that this was going to be a train wreck. So I didn't want to wait for it to come on. I just personally could not sit back in my position and just let this happen. So I wrote a letter to the CEO of MTV, Judith McGrath. And I thought that she would be a good person to write to because she had won an Emmy. She won an Emmy for a program about discrimination. So I figured, she's going to really react to this, because I'm going to honestly tell her 
why Guido is inappropriate for a corporation to use because it was in their promo. They said, watch the new program about Guidos at the shore. On their website, it said, these are the Guidos, this, these are the Guidettes. It was just blatantly out there. Now, of course, if it was about another ethnicity. It wouldn't say, come and watch the ends down at the bar or come and watch some other pejorative term. They just wouldn't do it. But it seems to be okay here. So I wrote to her and I asked her, that she should not have this type of show, that it was an insult to Italian-Americans. And I asked her, in my capacity, representing the members of Unico National, not to have this show and to give me the opportunity to explain to her why it shouldn't be on. <coughs> well, for about two or three weeks, we never heard anything. So I started to make phone calls. And then finally, on the morning of the debut of the show, on December 3rd, I was able to get on the phone with five executives from MTV. And I pleaded my case. One of them was Tony DeSanto. He actually set up the call. And there were three others on there, and they happened to be three women. And we started to discuss it, and they set about talking about their, their standards that they analyzed. They had a person on the phone that was an executive that was responsible for guidelines and standards. And they had done this analysis. Right? This, I'm going to bring you back to what I said before. They had done this analysis, and they told me, no, you're mistaken. We found out, Guido's not a bad term. And I said, you're not going to tell me that Guido's not a bad term. It's hate speech, it's pejorative, and you shouldn't be using it as a responsible corporation. And it took a while. I also asked them to pull the program because of the negative stereotyping of the young people that were on there. Uh, I can tell you it was a, a partial victory because it was Tony DeSanto that finally relented and agreed that they would pull the word Guido from their promos and Guidos from their websites. And that day, they did pull it from their promos and their websites. So it was a partial victory, but they would not pull the show. And that's when I told them that if they were not going to be responsive, then we had to take the next step. And that's when we began our campaign against the advertisers. And I am pleased that Domino's Pizza was the first one that came forward with a written statement, a verbal, a verbal and written statement that they would not advertise. But since then, by writing to others, we've achieved 11 national advertisers who have given us a written documentation that they will not advertise. Companies like Dell, T-Mobile, Palm, Zappos Shoes, American Family Insurance, and others will not advertise. Now, yeah, absolutely. We should. We should. Absolutely. And we're not going to stop. We're going to continue on that. That's part of the plan. We're continuing it. Unfortunately, there's hundreds of companies. And Linda's right. We did probably raise the, the, the this visibility of this program. But it's a double-edged sword, and candidly, enough is enough. So we have to continue to ask the other advertisers <coughs> not to sponsor it. But we're not going to stop there. Because I can tell you, of all the things that have occurred in the past, for some reason, Jersey Shore has touched a nerve. It has touched a nerve and galvanized Italian-Americans and non-Italian-Americans across the country that know, that know that this has crossed the line. And so therefore, we can't stop. We're going to continue on. You, you can see that it's, they're still in the press. They're getting a lot of publicity. And I say to those young bimbos and buffoons that are on that show, for a little bit of fame, they are going to have a lifetime of shame. Because as far as I'm concerned, they're selling their soul. And everybody's laughing at them and not with them because they're all a bunch of bimbos and buffoons. And you saw the revelation just the other day, yesterday on Fox News, that uh, Jenny on the show announced that she's not even Italian, that she's Spanish and Irish. And the, uh, the other one, the most obnoxious one on the show, Snooki, Nicole Snooki Polizzi from Albany, <coughs> New York, that she's Chilean. And so what you have now is a double insult. Now, first off, they're saying this is a show about Italian-Americans and, and negative stereotyping of us. And now they've got people pretending to be Italian-Americans. It's amazing. Where it's almost like you know a minstrel show with blackface. And I, I equate it the same way. Now they're playing at denigrating us.